Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here, and I am gonna talk about how to match your nutrition to your cycle. Um, this is information that I outline and go into detail in my book, The Female Fat Solution, which is on Amazon. If you have not picked up a copy, do so. Um, I'm in the middle of my next book, uh, Nutrition for Female Athletes, and um, I'm gonna be diving into more information on that later in this week, but I wanted to touch up on and brush up on just nutrition for your overall cycle and how your cycle works, how your hormones function, and then really focusing on just everyday foods that you can choose that are really going to work with how your body naturally functions. There's so much information out there for women in terms of, okay, this is going to be helpful, this is going to be the best fat burner and all that stuff. And not to say that any of it's bad, but it's oftentimes those types of you know, really fancy or flashy things are not necessarily something that's going to be beneficial for you long term, especially if you are shifting your nutrition and not maintaining it for at least 12 weeks. Your body goes in a 12 week cycle for your hormones. So if you're going to be making a change with your nutrition, with your exercise, with your health, you should be working on that for about 12 weeks to make sure you're getting a full upload and imprint on your body, on your cycle. Otherwise, anything else is just a little bit, mm, you know, like not that it's bad, but it's not, not as great. Hi, Melody. Um, so some of this information I also cover in my podcast, The Female Health Solution, talking about a lot of different aspects of health for women. Um, and I do have a 12-week program and um, enrollment is open for the next round of my 12-week program and it is really specific nutrition for you, for your body, to help you get unstuck from where you're at to get the right nutrition to move you forward. So I'm going to talk about this piece right here, nutrition for your hormones. Now the one thing, um, happy Sunday Cheryl, the one thing when we talk about nutrition for hormones is that oftentimes this seems like a little weird or you're like, you know what, is this really that important? This doesn't seem like it'd be that big of a deal. Like, really? Really? But it's amazing the positive impact that just shifting how you're eating can have on your body overall. So when we look at this, uh, this blue right here, day one is the first day of your period, day 14 is about when you ovulate, day 28 is about when that ends. Now that's different for everybody. And I will do a completely separate video on if you don't have your cycle, if you're in menopause or birth control or all these other things. I will spend a lot of time on that. So if you guys do have questions on that, um, I will be talking about that specifically in a separate video because that deserves its own video. <laughs> um, but your estrogen is higher in the first part of your cycle here. Now, estrogen will increase your metabolism. It's gonna burn carbs naturally, which is amazing, right? So a lot of times people are nervous about eating carbs. They're like, oh, I don't wanna eat carbs. I'm not supposed to eat carbs. <laughs> eat the carbs. Burns carbs. It's fabulous. It's great. Like, thank you, estrogen, for burning carbs, right? Yes. Um, you're gonna get more energy. You're gonna have a faster cell turnover. Uh, workouts are gonna seem easier. You're gonna bust through them. Yes. You want me to build an app for nutrition for women? Yes. You know what? If I knew how to build an app, I totally would. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to work on that though, Melody. I'll work on that. Um, when we talk about the overall, see the green here is basal body temperature. So your basal body temperature is a lot lower here in this estrogen phase. So it's important that you're leaning into that shift in difference in your body here. So to get estrogen to work better and to help it burn more carbs and everything, you're gonna to wanna to eat cooling foods. So chicken, turkey, fish, anything that's mint, uh, rosemary, thyme, those are spices and things that are more cooling for the body. Um, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables. Your digestive system is functioning better at this point too so it can break down fiber in foods a lot easier. Um, and then drinking just colder water, uh, room temperature or cooler, is also gonna be just working with the estrogen better. Again, helping you to have those hormones function better, you know, really work with the power that estrogen brings to your body and your system. Now, after you ovulate, your basal body temperature does rise, and progesterone is the dominant hormone then in this second phase of the month. And this is a warming phase. So what does that mean if it's a warming phase? Um, you're going to want to eat more warming foods to lean into progesterone. There's also a few things with progesterone that make it tougher for your body and your system. 
Progesterone is going to slow down your digestive system, slow down your, um, slow down your uh, metabolism. It's also just fat storing, right? Um, overall, when your body's fat storing over high spot, 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 of course, is deciding to say hello. And what did you bring me this time? Slobbery Kong. Mm, so nice. Thank you, puppy. Sit. Good boy. Stay. Okay. We'll see how long he lasts there. Oh, not long. <laughs> um, so progesterone, you're going to want to, uh, because your body temperature is actually higher at this point too, you can actually tap into deeper fat burning stores that your body has at this point. So I talk about doing some intermittent fasting and some other specific things at this point to really get your body into fat burning mode a lot better. But overall eating warming foods here, you know, beef, bacon, dairy, spicy foods, you know, obviously warming for the body. They're going to help your digestive system function better. And it's slower at that point. So you, so you're sort of counteracting that slowing down. You, I know, I know you're excited. There you go. Good boy. So, ugh, sorry, <laughs> so slobbery. So when your digestive system slows down with progesterone being higher, you get to eat some spicy foods. Ginger is very warming, also very good for your digestive system. So you, these things are working hand in hand to help your body function a heck of a lot better. And that is going to help your body um, not only work better, but the other thing too is that you're shifting your nutrition for your hormones, so it helps regulate your cycle better too. Now, now what does that mean? There's a lot of women who they'll oh, they'll just be stuck and frustrated with a lot of things. Um, you know, weight gets to be a problem. Um, their their weight, their their hormones, their mood, their energy. Oh my gosh, energy is so huge for women. They feel like ugh. I don't have the energy to do this, that, or the other, or I feel stuck at this, that, or the other. And, and then I want to get to the gym and I can't get to the gym or I want to eat healthier, but I get so tired that I just grab for something because I'm craving it, right? So common, but oftentimes women think, oh, I'm screwing it up or this is something that's wrong with me. Well, if your hormones are completely out of whack and not functioning correctly in your body, of course you're going to want to grab for something that's like a quick carb or a quick fix, right? If these things are under control, functioning better and smoother running, it's much easier to stay on track. Doesn't that make sense, right? So that's the thing with just shifting differently for estrogen and for progesterone, really helping your body get a pattern down, leaning into the difference that happens throughout the month for women, right? Now again, this is not exact for every gal, right? Sometimes it's a little bit shorter, sometimes it's longer, but that is just you. So if you guys have questions on that, I'm gonna put a link below the video here, and that way you can schedule a call with me. If you've got questions on whatever you're struggling with, or hey, I'm stuck at this point, or hey, I want to try and make this happen next. I would be more than happy to chat with you and give you some tips and tricks on, you know, just incorporating some healthy whole foods in week to week so that you can get the most out of your hormones and out of your body. All right. That's what I got for you guys today. Please let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to do a video on. I am going to talk next time about menopause, not having a cycle, birth control, all those things and how it relates to your hormones as well. So stay tuned for that video. Yes. All right, I'll see you guys later.